One morning, when Miffy awoke, she saw that her teddy bear was sick. His arm was dangling by a thread. Oh dear, said Miffy. You're looking very bad, little teddy. I'll have to take you to the doctor. Is there a doctor for teddy bears? she asked. Well, said Mother Bunny, the very best toy doctor is your own Auntie Alice. So straight after breakfast, Miffy carefully wrapped her sick teddy bear in a napkin and placed him in her scooter basket in order to bring him to Auntie Alice. She rode as fast as she could up the hill to her auntie's house. Will you please look at my teddy bear? asked Miffy. Mother said you're the very best toy doctor. Well, said Auntie Alice, come in Miffy dear and let me examine the patient. Auntie Alice placed Miffy's teddy bear on the table and carefully removed the napkin. Oh dear, said Auntie Alice. This is a more serious condition than I thought. Look, even the stuffing is coming out of his body. You've come just in time. Oh, can you help him? asked Miffy anxiously. I think I can, said Auntie Alice but he will have to stay in my hospital for one night so that I know he is well again. Miffy was very sad to be without her teddy for even one night. But she had to go home. Back home she felt very sad. She could hardly eat her dinner. I don't think I can sleep very well without my teddy bear, she said. Well, Miffy, said her mother, I will telephone Auntie Alice and ask her if you can stay with her tonight so you can be close to your teddy. I've already sewn Miffy's teddy together, so if she comes back here to sleep, I'll put him in her bed as a surprise for her when she wakes in the morning. So father drove Miffy to Auntie Alice to stay for the night. As soon as Miffy was asleep, Auntie Alice carefully tucked the repaired teddy bear under Miffy's blanket. When Miffy awoke in the morning, she saw right away that her teddy was healthy again. Oh, Auntie Alice, it's true, she shouted. You are really the best toy doctor that ever was. Thank you, dear, said Auntie Alice proudly. And Miffy was very happy that her teddy bear was well again. One day, Miffy and her friends were playing with a ball. Let's see who can throw a ball the highest, said Miffy. And she threw her ball. Then it was Melanie's turn. It went even higher. Then Aggie tried. Quite so high. Just then Poppy Pig came by. Hello girls, said Poppy. I'm very good at throwing balls. May I try? Okay, said the girl bunnies. Aggie said, 
but I don't think you can throw the ball higher than we can. Poppy threw the ball. Up it went, but it did not come down. What happened? said Poppy. Did you see how high I threw the ball? Where is it? The bunny girls laughed. The ball is in the tree, said Melanie. You threw the ball high enough for it to get stuck in the tree. Luckily, the wind blew the ball out of the tree. OK. Let's see how far I can throw the ball this time. The ball sailed away and splashed into the pond. Oh dear, said Poppy. I have lost your ball and I can't swim. But just then, Miffy's father came along. Don't worry, he said. I will get your ball out of the pond and then we can have a game to see who can kick the ball the furthest. Father Bunny got in a boat and rowed out to the middle of the pond and took the ball out of the water. Aggie, let's see how far you can kick the ball, said Father Bunny. Then Melanie tried. All right, said Father Bunny. That was very good. And now it's Miffy's turn. Now, young bunny girls, said Father Bunny, I will show you how to really kick a ball. Poppy Pig was glad that she didn't have to kick the ball, but she watched Father Bunny to see how a ball should really be kicked. The ball sailed away straight towards Miffy's house. Dinner is ready, called Mother Bunny. Aggie, Melanie, Poppy and Miffy gasped. Father Bunny was very sorry about what he'd done. And he was worried that Mother Bunny would be very angry with him. But Mother Bunny just laughed and said, Well, at least the ball is in time for dinner. Now let's see who can run the fastest to the table. It was a beautiful day. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and the flowers were in bloom. Miffy thought, this is going to be a nice day. Mother, said Miffy, it's such a lovely day. May I visit Poppy Pig? Yes, Miffy, but it's a long way and your scooter is broken. You'll have to walk. It was a long walk and Miffy was happy when she reached Poppy's house at last. She knew that Poppy always had some nice biscuits to eat. When she knocked on the door, she could almost taste those biscuits. But there was no answer and she looked up and saw a note stuck at the door. Miffy read the note. I'm off to visit my cousin. Back next week, it said. Oh well, thought Miffy, what else can I do on this lovely day? She walked all the way back home. I think I'll call Melanie, she said. Miffy went to the telephone and dialed Melanie's number. 
Melanie's mother answered the phone. Can Melanie come out and play with me? asked Miffy. Oh, I'm sorry, Miffy dear, said Melanie's mother. Melanie is in bed with a cold and cannot go outside to play today. I know, thought Miffy. I'll get my ball and go and play with Snuffy. So Miffy went to her cupboard and took out her big brightly coloured ball. Snuffy loves to chase this ball, said Miffy. She ran as fast as she could to where Snuffy lived. We will have great fun, she thought. But when she got there, Snuffy was lying beside her empty food dish, fast asleep. Miffy could see that Snuffy had just had her dinner. Miffy bounced her ball up and down, up and down. But Snuffy only opened one eye, just a little bit, and then closed it again and stayed fast asleep. So poor Miffy had to go home again, still with no one to play with on such a beautiful day. I'll just have to play by myself, she thought, but I can still have fun. I'll go and fly my kite. She took out her beautiful kite with the long ribbons. She held onto the string and ran across the meadow. She ran and ran, but the kite just bounced along the ground. There was no wind, no wind at all, and the kite could not fly up into the air. Miffy stopped running. This started off as such a nice day, she thought, but everything went wrong. I think I'll just go home. At home, Miffy took one of her favourite books from her shelf. Here is something that never goes wrong, she said. A good book. Miffy smiled as she read the funny story. What fun, she thought. It wasn't such a bad day after all. Every time Miffy passed Poppy Pig's house, she admired the beautiful apple tree in Poppy's front garden. In the autumn, the leaves were golden in colour. In the winter, there were no leaves at all. In the spring, lovely white blossoms covered the entire tree. And in the summer, the tree was full of little green apples. Oh, Poppy, said Miffy one summer day, I would love to taste one of your apples. Not yet, Miffy dear, said Poppy. The apples are still too small, green and hard. You must wait a while. The next time Miffy walked by Poppy Pig's house, she saw that the apples were larger and were changing their colour. Half green and half red. Now may I please taste one of your apples, Poppy? asked Miffy. Not yet, Miffy, said Poppy. The apples must be all bright red before they are ready to eat. As Miffy was very excited, it was difficult for her to wait for things. She was so eager to taste one of those apples. Very soon, all the apples were very big and bright red. But birds like red apples too. Poppy thought, it's time to pick those apples before the birds eat them. That very day, Miffy walked home from school very quickly, hoping that at last Poppy's apples would be ready to eat. She was so excited, thinking about how good they would taste and could hardly wait to get to Poppy's house. And there it was. But look! There were no more apples in the tree. All those wonderful apples were gone. Miffy ran to Poppy's door and knocked. But Poppy was not home. Who could have taken 
can pop his apples? Miffy wondered. She looked into Poppy's kitchen window. There were no apples on the table. Just then, Poppy arrived. Oh, Poppy, shouted Miffy. Someone has taken all the apples from your tree. Now I won't be able to taste even one of them. Poppy said, Oh, I was away buying some fresh milk. Wouldn't you like to come in and have a glass of milk with me? Oh, yes, Poppy, said Miffy. But what about your apples? Well, maybe I will have a surprise for you, Miffy dear. And they went inside Poppy's house. As soon as they entered the door, Miffy smelt something very, very good. Something fresh out of the oven. Wouldn't you like to have a big slice of apple pie to go with your milk? And then Poppy opened her oven and brought out a huge pie full of delicious apples. She put the apple pie on the table. It looked wonderful and it smelt delicious. Miffy was very surprised and very happy. At last, she had a taste of those wonderful big red apples. Miffy, Melanie and Grunty were invited by Boris and Barbara Bear to a picnic at their home in the forest. The three friends walked very quickly through the woods to get there. They were all very hungry. Soon they were there and they saw Boris making a circle out of some stones on the ground. Barbara was preparing lunch on the picnic table. Hello, Miffy. Hello, Grunty. Hello, Melanie, she called. I'm putting some of the vegetables from our garden into this pot. We will have a wonderful vegetable soup for our lunch. Hello, Miffy. Hello, Grunty. Hello, Melanie called out Boris. I'm going to cook the soup for our lunch and you are going to help me cook it. Melanie, you can look in the woods and find some very small sticks to help start the fire. Grunty, will you please fetch some logs from the pile in the back of the house? They will burn hot enough to do the cooking. Then Barbara said, and Miffy, Will you please help me slice the carrots and cabbage for the soup? So everyone had a job to do. It was fun and they all got hungrier and hungrier. But when everything was ready, they noticed there was still one very important thing missing. We have forgotten to bring water to boil the vegetables in, said Barbara. So Barbara and Miffy went to get water from the house. Once they had filled the pot, they carried it outside. They placed the big pot full of water and vegetables over the fire. Before long, a delicious smell rose from the cooking pot. And as the soup began to boil, they all noticed an exciting bubbling sound. That bubbling is just like music, shouted Miffy. Yes, said Barbara excited. But it needs some rhythm. And she began to tap the cooking pot with a wooden spoon. It made a ringing bell-like sound. Then Melanie stamped her feet in the same rhythm. And Grunty picked up two sticks and began to click them together. I'll get my banjo, said Boris. And he ran to the house. When he came back out, strumming his banjo, Miffy also started to dance. And 
everyone followed her around the soup. Tapping and clicking and strumming and dancing to the music. It was a real promenade, a real forest orchestra. When they had circled the cooking pot three times, the soup was ready at last. The music and dancing had made them all happy and very hungry. So when Barbara finally passed around their bowls and spoons, they all ate the delicious music soup with extra joy. It never tasted so good. Puppy 